In today's lecture, we'll be talking about uh, outputs uh, from uh, industrial sensors. And uh, I will focus uh, only on uh, analog sensors. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, you have uh, a whole specialized subject about uh, digital buses that are used. In and uh, in this subject, uh, we will be discussing the analog stuff. So we'll be discussing uh, voltage and uh, current signals that uh, you may find uh, in many industrial applications. So what is it if I will be talking about analog signals? Well, uh, we will be talking about uh, voltage and current signals that uh, you can find between the sensor and uh, some uh, controller system. So for example, here we have a sensor that might measure temperature, it might measure liquid level, it might measure pressure, any variable that you can imagine. And uh, we want that this signal is uh, a standard signal so that we can connect it uh, to our controller system. And uh, it means that uh, there needs to be some standards defined that are telling us what range should we use for the voltage and uh, what range should we use for the current. And uh, therefore uh, we uh, have defined ranges uh, where this voltage can be. Uh, there are several reasons uh, for those standard signals. Uh, one reason is that we want that uh, we can connect uh, a sensor from one manufacturer to a control system from a different manufacturer. So uh, we need to have some standard signals. You can see the most common standard signals summarized in this table. So if we are talking about voltage, uh, the most common signal is uh, from 0 to 10 volts. And uh, the current signal, the most common one, is from 4 to 20 milliampers. So what is this? What does it mean? It means that uh, if I measure some variable such as temperature, then the minimal value of my variable will correspond to the minimal value of my range. So for example, if uh, I measure temperature between let's say minus 50 and um, 100 centigrades, then minus 50 would correspond to 0 volts and uh, 100 centigrades would correspond to 10 volts. And for the current signal it is similar, the minimal value of my variable would be 4 milliamps and uh, the maximum value would correspond to 20 milliamps. So when you have a sensor like this, uh, you can connect it uh, to any control system such as a programmable controller for example and uh, this controller will read this voltage and then in the software you will tell what this signal means so for example if I read 10 volts this means that it's 100 centigrades or if I read 20 milliamps this means 100 centigrades as well so in every data sheet of such a sensor with those standard signals you need to find uh, some sensitivity or some other info that, tell is, is, that is telling you how you should recalculate between the actual measured variable and uh, the signal at the output. The other signals that you can see in this table are also used but uh, they are less common than uh, the ones highlighted in red. So for the voltage signal we can see that we have also minus 10 volts to 10 volts or minus 5 volts to 5 volts. Those two signals with the minus voltage are bidirectional so I can measure in both directions. So for example if this would be a signal that uh, is from a speed sensor I can measure in both directions. I can measure what is the speed in RPM for example when it is turning clockwise and the same when it's turning counterclockwise. 
Uh, for current signals, we have only one polarity. The most common signal is 4 to 20 milliamps. We see in this lecture why this is so. But there is also another current range from 0 to 20 milliamps, which is less used, but uh, uh, it is still used uh, more often than some of those voltage ranges that you can see here. So, uh, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking still about uh, some analog signals? Are they still used? Well, the answer is yes. The industry is uh, conservative and uh, it means that also those quite old analog signals are still used. But it is true that uh, there are less used for brand new plants. So if you are building uh, today like a new factory from scratch, you will most likely choose uh, digital sensors or digital signals uh, to work with. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the digital sensors are more expensive, but uh, in many cases they can measure multiple variables. For example, they can measure temperature and humidity at the same time and give you this info as a number or they can measure, let's say, uh, pressure and, and uh, barometric pressure and pressure difference, for example. And uh, it also depends on how many variables you actually measure. So how many variables you need to connect to your control system. So for few variables, it might be actually less expensive to have analog sensors because uh, you have some separate wiring and uh, you have uh, some separate inputs on uh, your controller system but uh, if you have more sensors then it might be less expensive to use uh, digital sensors digital sensors they operate typically on a bus so uh, you have the, those sensors interconnected together and uh, then you use only one or just a few of uh, the inputs that you have uh, on your programmable control. And uh, analog sensors or analog signals are also used uh, if you need to replace uh, only something in your technology. So if you are not updating the whole plant, but uh, if you are just replacing some part of it. So uh, it's typical that uh, you use the same signals uh, like you had before because then you don't need to change the wiring, you, need, you don't need to test all the technology of, of data transfer and so on. So the analog signals are still current and they are used in the industry. Uh, in the industrial signals, uh, the most uh, current signal is uh, the current loop. And again, we'll see, we'll see why today. So it is still used, but uh, less with uh, brand new technologies. Uh, let's take a look on uh, how we can interconnect uh, those sensors together. Uh, of course, uh, the sensors uh, will need some power supply. So uh, the typical voltage used in industrial systems is uh, 24 volts DC. But uh, there are also some other standards that are used typically. So you can find 36, you can find 12, you can find 15, for example. And uh, typically the sensors might be powered by any voltage in this range. So it typically starts from 12 volts and it's going up to 36 and uh, the nominal voltage is uh, typically 24 volts. Now this is DC voltage. Uh, we'll see today that uh, there will be several possibilities how the sensor can actually be powered if it's uh, like a separate power connection from a separate power supply or if it is powered directly from the line but it's DC voltage but in some cases uh, you may require also some AC voltage so in this case you require a separate power supply again the typical voltage used in industrial systems is uh, 24 volts AC in this case when it's AC 
but if you are using AC voltage, uh, it means that you cannot power the sensor directly from the current loop. This works only for DC voltage. And then this will give you at least uh, a three wire connection between your sensor and your controller system. Uh, here, this table is telling us uh, what is approximately uh, the resistance and the area of uh, wires that are used uh, typically in, uh, in industrial systems. So uh, when we are connecting a sensor, we don't need uh, any high current. We are powering the sensor and then we have typically a current loop which at maximum can give us like 20 milliamperes. So in this case uh, we can use uh, a fairly thin wire with a smaller diameter, so something like this, for example 0.5 approximately. And uh, we can see what is approximately the resistance for about 1000 meters. So it's about 84 ohms. And we'll see also today that this will play an important role because uh, one of the features of the current loop will be that uh, the resistance in the current loop should not be higher as some limit value. And uh, one of the limiting factors might be the wire resistance, which for example you see here how long that is. You can see here also uh, the name convention uh, that is used in, uh, in naming wires. Uh, here AWG, it stands for American Wire Gauge. So this is the American standard which is using a number and this number corresponds to some gauge of the wire which corresponds to some cross-sectional area and uh, other countries uh, use metric systems so you may find something like 0.5 or 0.4 uh, diameter of the wire. So this is to give you just an idea that uh, you may find two systems basically the metric one and uh, the AWG. Uh, with the AWG you can see that the smaller the number here the larger the diameter of the wire. So you will see both, I will use the metric system, but just keep in mind that uh, both types exist and uh, you may need to use, uh, to use both at some point. Okay, so uh, why is it important to have an idea about the wire resistance? Well, we will see that um, the current loop and uh, the voltage signal as well uh, will be influenced somehow by the wire diameter. It will be definitely the case uh, of the voltage signal. If uh, we will have the current signal then if we are below some limit then this will not be a problem but above some limit that, that uh, will cause us trouble. So in this sheet, this sheet we see an example of uh, how the wire resistance is changing with temperature. And this might be quite significant because uh, the changes of temperature may degrade our voltage signals that we have in our application. So let's imagine that we have uh, a wire AWG22, which uh, here in this uh, table we see that it's about 0.65 millimeters diameter. And this wire has uh, about 53 ohms per centigrade. Uh, so repair 1000 meter but uh, this resistance is uh, for 20 centigrade so if uh, we change the temperature it is clear that the resistance will change and uh, the wire is from copper so it means that uh, we will use the temperature coefficient of resistance for copper which is this one and uh, if I want to calculate uh, the wire resistance I take the initial resistance which was approximately 53 ohms and uh, then I calculate what is the change of resistance. So now it's not important that, uh, that much uh, what is the absolute value. I just want to show here that uh, the change will be about 
15%. So it's not negligible. And uh, if we have a voltage signal that is being transferred over this length, it means that uh, there will be a voltage drop. And uh, the problem is that uh, the voltage drop will be a function of temperature. So uh, if the temperature is changing, for example, if in the winter we may have like minus 20 outside somewhere in, in some plant, and uh, in summer when the sun shines on the wires, that they may get easily to uh, 2 plus 60. So uh, we may have a significant problem with uh, temperature changes because the temperature will change us the wire resistance and this in turn will change the behavior of our circuit. And we'll see that uh, the current signal will get rid of this problem at least in some range of uh, resistance and uh, this will be also one of the big advantages of uh, the current signal. So I will start with uh, the voltage signal because it's maybe easier to understand. So in the voltage signal, the signal is uh, the, the info that you need is being transferred as a voltage. So here you have the sensor itself. Now we're not talking about how the signal, how the sensor is powered. We're just talking about useful signal. So uh, the output of my sensor is my useful signal. And this corresponds to some measured property, such uh, as uh, temperature, pressure, and so on. And the output variable is uh, voltage. I call that V1 in my circuit. Now this voltage this is what you would directly measure on the output of your sensor. And here on the right hand side, the RL represents my load. And this is uh, the input resistance of my voltmeter. If you have a digital voltmeter, then RL might be something like 10 mega ohms, for example. If you use an analog instrument, this might be a few hundred of kilo ohms. Anyway, this is like a relatively large value. And between the input of your instrument and between the output of your sensor, you have uh, the resistance of the wire. Here, I mark that as RW. Uh, obviously, the resistance of the wire will be once there where you connect the sensor to your instrument and then back. But uh, in terms of uh, an equivalent diagram, uh, we can imagine that this wire will be an ideal with, uh, with resistance zero. And then the total resistance of my wiring will be hidden behind uh, this RW resistor. Uh, but this voltage arrangement will have uh, some problems. First of all, it is obvious that we do not measure directly the same voltage on our instrument as we have on the output. The reason is simple. Here there is some current flowing like this and uh, therefore we will have some voltage drop on uh, our wire resistance. Now if the wire resistance would be constant and if it would not change with temperature or anything else then that's not a problem that would not be a problem we could compensate for that we could uh, subtract or add for example the voltage that uh, we measure for v2 we could uh, add the the voltage drop on the resistance and we would get v1 but uh, since rw is changing and we don't know how this is changing then this might be a problem so the first problem is that we do not measure the same voltage V1 as V2. Now the second problem is that uh, in terms of sensitivity, now this type of circuit will be quite sensitive to interference. So if we will have a motor or a pump or a relay near the cabling or near the sensor or near our instrument here, then we may have trouble with interference. And this is a typical problem of uh, voltage-based signals. You measure some signal 
and then when this uh, motor turns on uh, you will get quite high interference to give you an example you can see it here uh, now this is a real signal that uh, I've measured uh, in some application now on the left picture this is a signal from a thermocouple so this uh, voltage corresponds to temperature difference and uh, on the left picture it is uh, the signal from the thermocouple without any motors connected in the application so you can see it's a fairly nice uh, straight line and on the right picture it's the, the same signal but uh, when the motor was turned on so you can see that where is the signal is it somewhere here or is it somewhere here how do I calculate the average and this is like what typically happens if you have sources of interference near your voltage signals of course this uh, example is a little bit extreme because uh, in case of a thermocouple the voltage that you measure is uh, in the order of few millivolts typically at maximum few millivolts so uh, this signal uh, is uh, very sensitive to interference but uh, the same problem will happen also when uh, you have a standard voltage signal although here it might not be as uh, significant as uh, in the thermocouple case but anyway voltage signals are very sensitive to interference and uh, the third problem that uh, I would like to talk about is that uh, we will be limited in the length of our signal because uh, of this voltage drop now if the wire resistance is too high the voltage that we measure gets smaller and smaller and uh, that might be a problem if we have some long wires so for example it might not be an issue if you have uh, like 1000 meters of wire but uh, if you would require something like 10,000 meters of wire then this might be a problem so for longer connections uh, it is actually today a better solution to use some digital buses uh, because uh, you can add re repeaters for example and you can get basically the same quality of the signal and uh, in industrial applications it is uh, nothing uh, unheard of to have like very long distances between uh, the sensors and between your controllers for example so the, the length uh, might easily be a few hundred meters or maybe a few thousand meters. Now let's take a look on more detailed explanation why uh, we need to care about the wire resistance. Now if we redraw the circuit that uh, I just showed you, uh, we will find that it has this configuration. Here we have the voltage supply V1 this is the signal that is coming from my sensor this is uh, my wire resistance and this is my voltmeter resistance and uh, on the voltmeter I measure the voltage V2 now if you actually analyze this circuit and uh, find the equation for V2 you will find out that uh, it looks like this it's equal to V1 times RL this is the load resistance and divided by the sum of RL plus RW so we can see that if uh, RW is changing here this ratio will change and even though we have the same signal on the output of my sensor we'll get a different voltage on V2 so uh, based on the changes of uh, the wire resistance also the output voltage will change and this might be changing with temperature this might be changed with uh, changes of length of the wire and so on so this might be one problem when you have a voltage signal of course here it depends on the value of RW of the wire resistance so for example if you have a wire with a larger diameter it will have a smaller resistance and uh, it will not play as a big role as uh, compared to the value of RL 
so that might be an issue but uh, if you have a like thicker wire uh, it will decrease the, the problem uh, now uh, I have made a simulation of uh, this circuit to show you how is uh, is this changing so uh, I will run it um, and uh, we'll see the circuit uh, in action I just need to start uh, the new web page uh, it is uh, available for you so you can uh, use uh, the circuit as well if you want to make uh, some uh, some simulations and uh, the circuit uh, actually looks like this so here I have a 10 volt power supply so this corresponds to my standard range uh, of uh, 0 to 10 volts uh, this is uh, my input of uh, the controller system so I've chosen 250 ohms just this is just an example value and uh, this 20 ohms this represents the wire resistance if I run the simulation we'll see the voltages that we have here on this node and on this node as well so let's just uh, run it and uh, we'll see what uh, are the voltages so obviously here uh, I have uh, the same voltage uh, as uh, on the power supply so 10 volts but uh, here on this node I have uh, I have only 9.26 and uh, if I will change the value so for example if I will make this larger uh, based on our equation uh, we will see that this voltage will drop so let's make it larger let's make it for example 40 ohms let's say we have added for some reason the the wire length or the, the temperature has increased uh, if I run it again here we'll see that uh, now suddenly I have like 8.6 volts so uh, I have increased my resistor here and uh, although my signal from the sensor was the same here I have uh, like a small signal now in a real application uh, this would not be 250 ohms this would be uh, if it's like a digital voltmeter now, now this would be for example one mega ohm so let's try it with one mega ohm and uh, we'll see that here it will be almost uh, 10 volts so it actually depends on the precision that we use for calculation uh, now something uh, something was wrong because one mega ohm and 40 ohm should not give us this this voltage I'm doing something wrong with my simulation here. Um, and anyway, the current looks like it's fairly large. So let's see. Maybe the 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 ratio of uh, the values is uh, uh, is too small or was too large. So I'll just uh, try to run transient analysis and uh, maybe it's the problem of initial conditions here I just uh, run no let's just see the, the voltages let's add some probes here and let's see it again okay so now there's something wrong with uh, with my simulation because we should get we should get the this is equal to, to 10 volts I don't know what's the problem now or not so anyway uh, so uh, you can play with this circuit uh, if you use this link uh, you can try your own simulations uh, what you should get is uh, that uh, uh, as you are changing the resistance of the wire the voltage uh, will be changing that you measure on the output and that's the, the message that you should get uh, from the simulation uh, so where can we find uh, voltage signals are they used in industrial systems well yes but they are not that common uh, because uh, of the interference problems so uh, voltage signals are used in applications where you don't have that 
interference problems, such as, uh, for example, air conditioning applications. So let's say you want to control the temperature in a room. So uh, your controller will uh, output a voltage signal from, from 0 to 10 volts, for example, and this voltage signal will go then to uh, your air conditioning unit and will tell it how, how fast, with what power should it run. Uh, so voltage signals are used in applications where you don't have a high risk of interference. So it's definitely not an industrial environment like in a plant, for example. Uh, the problem, and well, another problem of uh, the voltage signal is that uh, you cannot uh, detect a faulty line because your minimum voltage is zero volts. Your minimum signal is zero volts. So uh, if uh, there is some disconnected wire in your connection, then zero volts will be there, but this corresponds to minimal signal. So um, you, you cannot recognize if this is really a minimal signal or if it is, is a faulty line. Uh, so for example, you can get rid of this uh, in such a way that you use uh, from something like 2 volts to 10 volts, for example, or from 1 volt to 5 volts. Uh, but this again limits you the range because uh, you don't work from, from 0 volts, you work from t 2 volts to 10. So you have uh, your range of 8 volts. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you can detect a faulty line because you know that at every case, your minimal signal should be like 2 volts and if it's zero it's a faulty line. Uh, a voltage signal also requires a separate power supply line so uh, it, in minimal it requires three wires. Well, on the other hand uh, in terms of uh, measurements and uh, maintenance uh, it is very simple because you don't need to disconnect anything and you just take a voltmeter and measure the voltage that you have on the on the on the wiring, so uh, it is very simple. Everyone can do it. It's not dangerous because you just measure ten volts, and it's not a problem. So, in terms of uh, maintenance, it is uh, fairly simple. Uh, here are some info if you would uh, require some um, info about the voltage signal. So. Uh, as I was already saying, it's typical in air conditioning applications, so there is like an entire book about uh, about uh, those control systems and uh, also this guide uh, about building control systems. So it's, this kind of signal is uh, not used in, in factories, for example, but is used, for example, in building control systems. Uh, now let's take a look on uh, the current signal. And uh, here I will start with our circuit simulation. So here we'll have uh, the current supply, which uh, will represent as the sensor. And uh, I will use a 20 milliamp signal, which is like a maximum range. Here we'll have uh, the wire resistance. And here we will have uh, the sense resistor that is in the input of my control system and again I will use this uh, in a live simulation so that we see what is actually happening in the circuit so what we will do is so now we are changing uh, the current that flows in our circuit and uh, in order to show you the, the eventual problems uh, here I have added uh, a voltage source. So this voltage source will now represent as the interference that uh, we may find in the circuit. So for start I will just uh, disable this source. Uh, I will enter some small voltage, so let's say 1 millivolt, something so that I don't need to remove it from my circuit. And here I have a DC current source of 20 milliamps. Uh, you can see that this whole circuit is now connected in series. So it means that if my current supply gives me 20 milliamps, then uh, here I need to have 20 milliamps. 
and here I need to have 20 milliamps as well. Now this resistor represents me the input of my control system and uh, typically the resistance that you may find here is uh, somewhere in the range between 100 ohms and about 250. So let's take the worst case scenario and let's use 250. If I run the simulation, well, I will just add uh, some probes in my circuit. So I'm looking for the current that is flowing in this R1. This is my, my instrument. And then I'm looking for current that is flowing uh, in uh, from the power supply. We don't need to measure that because this is constant. This is 20 milliamps. So let's run it and uh, we'll just see what is the current. I'm just uh, at uh, the transient response so that we see uh, what is the current and we see that great now the current is exactly 20 milliamps now this was expected because uh, all our components are connected in series here you can see what are our voltages in the circuit so here on my load I have 5 volts but since I measure current I don't care at all about those 5 volts here, uh, this is the wire resistance of, of 10 ohms. So now on this node, this actually belongs over there. So uh, on this node, we have 5.2 volts. And uh, we have the 5.2 volts also on our current supply here. But our signal, our current is 20 milliamps. That's what we were looking for. Now let's play with the wire resistance. And let's say... I will make it again an extreme case. So for example, I will increase it 10 times, 100 ohms. So now I have 100 ohms via resistance and 250 ohms input resistance in my instrument. Now what will happen? That's obvious. The current will not change because this is a constant current supply. So the current is going to be 20 milliamps you can see, fine, 20 milliamps, so my signal stayed exactly the same, although I have changed 10 times my wire resistance. And uh, the voltage here, well, I don't care about the voltage on the wire, it increased. But uh, the current, which is carrying my signal, stayed the same. We can see that the voltage here increased. And uh, this will be also the limiting factor for how much resistance I can have in the current loop. So we'll see later that uh, the standards used for current loops, they will define us what is the total resistance that is connected in the loop. And we'll see that it's 600 ohms. So uh, the sum of wire resistance plus the input resistance should not be higher than 600 ohms. And we can see the reason here. If I would increase the resistance, it means that here I will need a larger voltage here on, um, on my current supply. And uh, larger and larger voltages will mean that, uh, for example, I don't have this voltage available on my power supply because I have 24 volts from my power supply. And uh, Another reason also might be safety. I could not go to 1000 volts because uh, although I would push the current through, I would create a dangerous voltage. So this will be the limiting factor for the current loop, the, the maximum voltage that we have on the output. Now let's take a look on this power supply V1. Now this is a voltage supply which uh, represented uh, in my circuit the interference voltage. Now what happens with the interference is that uh, it will get induced into the wiring. So when your wire runs near a relay or a pump or some motor, uh, especially when the motor is driven with a frequency inverter, then uh, you will get interference voltage which will add up to your voltage to this voltage that you see here uh, on the on the current loop so let's take a look on how does this affect uh, the current that flows in the current loop so now i will add uh, 
an interference voltage of let's say 20 volts. So I will have this 7 volts plus this 20 volts, so I will have 27 volts, that voltage in here. We we'll see that uh, this will give us uh, a different voltage on uh, the sense resistor. But uh, the current that is carrying our info about the variable that is produced by the current source will stay the same. So it will be also 20 milliamps. And that's what we can see here. So 20 milliamps regardless uh, of my interference voltage and uh, also the signal is not changing with uh, the wire resistance. So the current loop is uh, not that sensitive to the changes of uh, the wire resistance and uh, it is not sensitive as well to the interference voltage because it's not voltage that is carrying our signal but it's current that is carrying our signal. So uh, the advantage of uh, the current signal is that it is less sensitive to interference. I would not say that it is not sensitive at all, because uh, if the energy that you add to the system would be large, then obviously you would get some sensitivity to that. So uh, it's not zero sensitivity, but it's definitely much less than and the uh, voltage signal. Now if we are using a current signal uh, from 4 to 20 milliamps it has a simple fault detection because we know that our minimal signal at any case should be 4 milliamps and if it's something smaller or if it's zero then it means that the, the, the current loop is disconnected. Uh, on the other hand uh, the length that we can connect will be limited by the maximum resistance. We've seen that uh, in the simulation. So uh, if here I have uh, the wire resistance, and this is my sense resistor that is near my control system, uh, this sense resistor is typically something like 100 ohms. It may be 250, it actually depends on what voltage do you actually need to measure here on the on the input? Uh, anyway, it's few hundred ohms here. And uh, in order to limit the maximum voltage that we have on the output here, uh, we will need to limit the sum of R W and R V. And uh, this standard that is the most common one is uh, saying that this resistance uh, should be at maximum six hundred ohms. So if I have a 100 ohms sense resistor, this gives me about 500 ohms for my wire resistance. So 500 ohms uh, of, uh, of wire resistance, if I go back to my table with wire resistances, uh, which was somewhere here, so let's say we'll take this so that we have just an like, easy way to calculate that. So 500 ohms, this would give me about uh, 5000 meters a little bit less than 5000 meters of, uh, of my current loop. Uh, keep in mind that uh, this uh, is a loop so um, it goes back and forth so the total distance between the sensor and uh, the instrument in this case would be something like 200, uh, 2500 meters approximately. So the current signal uh, can be used uh, dependent on the wire diameter uh, up to length of a uh, few thousand of meters. Uh, now, uh, what properties does this current signal have and how can we actually use it um, in industrial applications? Uh, well, in the simulation I showed you that uh, the current loop is not influenced by the non-zero resistance of the loop. Uh, this is valid under one assumption and uh, this assumption is that the power supply voltage is larger than the voltage drop on the wires. So again, uh, this is uh, related with my simulation. Now, uh, if uh, the voltage drop would be very high, it means that uh, I will not get uh, enough power supply voltage to push the current through. 
and this is what is limiting the the maximum length. So uh, in industrial applications, the length is about 1,200 meters. Uh, although you may get uh, longer, because uh, if you use a thicker wire, you will limit its uh, its resistance. But again, this might be uh, impractical to have like very thick wires, for example. So what you may do is uh, that you have uh, here the current output from your sensor. Uh, you may get um, a converter, for example, like this. Uh, which takes the signal, measures what is the current, uh, provides the power supply for your sensor, and then you can use a digital bus, for example RS485, uh, to transfer that to another converter that will produce you the same current signal. So this is like a combination of uh, analog world, because here we have current signals, and uh, the digital world because here we are transmitting this as a digital bus and this is just an example you don't need to use RS485 as in this case but uh, you may use Ethernet for example for longer distances so there are devices like this which you may find they are ready-made and uh, uh, they allow you to, to, to transfer between the analog signals and uh, digital signals you may even connect this directly to some computer so uh, you have like a digital input uh, to your control system for example uh, now how can we connect uh, the current loop well there will be three possibilities how this can be done the first one that you see here on this screen is uh, the four wire connection so we have two wires for the current loop and we have two wires for the power supply voltage. So the two wires for the power supply voltage are separate from uh, the current loop. Now those pictures are coming from the standard that I was talking about. So uh, they, they call it type 4. Uh, this is like a 4 wire circuit. And uh, this case is uh, useful for example when uh, your transmitter or your sensor requires uh, a larger power supply current so for example if you need to heat something up or pump something then uh, you uh, will not be able to to use the, the the 20 milliamps or 4 milliamps that you have on your current loop and uh, in this case you need uh, a separate power supply so you have one power supply that uh, is supplying the transmitter, which is the sensor. And uh, then you have a separate circuit that goes uh, to your receiver. And this resistance, this is again the sense resistance that is uh, sitting in the, con in the controller system, which might be something like 100 ohms, for example. The second possibility is that you use uh, a three-wire connection and uh, this is also for the case uh, when uh, you require a larger current for your sensor. So your sensor here has, for example, a 24 volts DC power supply. So it has uh, like a plus and minus connection. And then the output is uh, going to your control system. And this is the sense resistor, which is uh, typically 100 ohms although you may use also 250 for example but if you use 250 then uh, out of the 600 that you have available this gives you less space for the wire resistance uh, typically the connection between the sensor and the control system is uh, running with a twisted pair so it's the same like for all cases also for this previous one this could be like a straight wire or it could be like a twisted pair and uh, we can see here uh, in red uh, how the current is flowing from the sensor now the sensor includes a circuit that uh, is producing constant current this current is being pushed through the current loop like this and it needs to flow back 
so that's this drawing through the second wire and here this uh, negative terminal of uh, the power supply is connected uh, <coughs> we'll also discuss uh, at the end of today's lecture what is the actual circuit that uh, produces constant current so for now it's like a, just a black box that uh, produces somehow constant current and uh, what is happening in this control system well regardless of uh, the type of the current loop you're using uh, this sense resistor is giving you some voltage so what you're doing is that you're transferring the signal from the sensor as current but then this uh, control system it runs some microprocessor for example so uh, it needs to read some voltage and this is the task of this sense resistor so uh, <coughs> we're using Ohm's law and uh, we're transferring the current uh, from the current loop to voltage but uh, the advantage he here is that uh, this is very close to my microprocessor a few centimeters typically and uh, it's shielded and it's uh, it's far from uh, the palms and any source of interference so here we don't have an issue of this interference because uh, uh, it's it's very close and uh, it's uh, far from interference sources and uh, one of the reasons why uh, typically 100 ohms is used here is uh, the simplicity of calculation because you take the you measure the current uh, and uh, it's easy to calculate by Ohm's law you just uh, use this factor of 100 and uh, you can get uh, what is your useful signal well it's the same like for 250 ohms but uh, it's definitely easier to divide something uh, in your mind by 100 than to divide it by 250 uh, the last possibility is that uh, we have uh, just the current loop with a two-wire connection and in this case it looks like this uh, we have the sensor uh, we connect uh, one terminal to 24 volts and then this wire supplies the current to the sensor and uh, at the same time it is also providing us the useful signal so the current the sensor takes from the power supply and, uh, and back like this is uh, proportional to what I measure so in this case uh, the sensor is supplied directly from the power from the current loop so obviously this will work only if uh, the current consumption of my sensor will be below 4 milliamps it's doable for some sensors for some it's not doable so this is like uh, a connection for let's say simple sensors uh, and uh, they can be powered directly uh, from the current loop now this wire might be again like a straight wire or might be like a twisted pair and again here uh, at the control system we will need a sense resistor which typically is 100 ohms but you can use again 250 ohms and here this resistor will transfer your current signal into voltage and this voltage will be read by your microprocessor uh, now let's take a look on the how actually this uh, current loop works and uh, I will describe you a circuit with uh, operation amplifiers so here you will need uh, some knowledge uh, of uh, electronics so what do we have here uh, we have uh, our digital to analog converter uh, this example is uh, for the case uh, when you measure something some variable in a digital way for example with a microprocessor for example you measure temperature or you measure humidity but uh, at the output you need to transfer this uh, as a current signal so this DAC this may represent you also the sensor itself or you may imagine that this would be a microcontroller which has a digital to analog converter and uh, 
the input is some signal, some variable that I have measured. Now, this is like a typical connection. Now, typically, uh, the digital to analog converter needs an accurate reference voltage. So here we'll have some ref source of my reference voltage. This might be something like uh, 2.5 volts, for example, or 1.25. Those are like typical values that are used for voltage references. Uh, the reference voltage and uh, the DAC and also the op amp uh, will require a stable voltage. So uh, we need a regulator that will regulate the voltage. So regardless of the changes of voltage that I have on the power supply here, this voltage will keep a constant value. So for example, this might be 5 volts, this might be 3.3 volts, or this might be 12 volts, for example. So uh, the goal of this voltage regulator is to keep the voltage constant even though the input voltage here, V plus, will be changing. So let's say we have uh, the V plus, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's like an industrial voltage, which would be 24 volts. So then most likely this uh, would be something like 12 volts, for example. And you can see that uh, this regulated voltage uh, is uh, supplied to the operation amplifier, which is here. It's supplied to the reference, which creates another but more accurate voltage as a reference. And uh, here it uh, is also supplying the digital to analog converter or uh, a microprocessor, which might be in this case. And uh, the component here it's a, a bipolar transistor and uh, we'll see in a minute that this uh, is used uh, like uh, an element that uh, controls the actual current so when this uh, like the black box converter is uh, connected in uh, the current loop you see only those two terminals you see this terminal is the positive one and uh, this is the return terminal and uh, the, the useful signal that uh, we want to transmit is this current I that I'm taking from the power supply and I'm pushing it through this uh, terminal back to ground of the power supply and I am sensing with the sense resistor what the value of this current is. Uh, let's take a look now uh, in more detail on, uh, on this circuit so that we understand uh, how this circuit actually works. So this DAC is uh, our signal source. This is giving me some signal that is uh, proportional to what I measure, to the temperature, to the humidity, to the pressure, to the position, whatever. Uh, you can see this symbol. This symbol represents the local ground of this circuit. And this circuit uh, needs uh, to have some reference, so this is my local ground. Uh, keep in mind that this is not uh, the same ground like uh, we will have in the power supply. So if I go back just very briefly into, into this example picture. Uh, so this is my circuit that we're discussing now. And uh, this is the ground of the power supply and of the controller system. But internally, uh, all the circuitry will have its local ground because it's not connected like to this to resistance to, to, to this uh, ground directly. So uh, how is this working? Well, the principal component is this operation amplifier. And uh, the operation amplifier, uh, you can see that it has a negative feedback. So here, this is a feedback connection, so all this is nothing else than an analog control system that uh, tries to maintain a zero voltage difference between its uh, inverting input and non-inverting inputs. So here with this plus symbol, this is the non-inverting input of my operation amplifier. And this is uh, the inverting input of my op-amp. 
and this operation amplifier tries to maintain zero voltage difference between this. So this is quite important. So zero voltage difference is what it tries to maintain here. Now if we look on the circuit, what is happening here? Uh, here we have some resistor that uh, is coming from the DAC and uh, the voltage on the on this output uh, will be proportional to what we measure. So uh, from the signal source I will get some voltage and uh, this is uh, the voltage that he, we, here we have as V out. And since I told you that uh, the op amp is uh, trying to maintain zero voltage difference between those two terminals here, we can say that uh, the voltage on uh, this uh, resistance R2 is equal to the voltage that I have here on uh, the output of my DAC minus the voltage here. But let's see this here. You can see that this inverting input is connected to my local ground. So uh, here is local ground. It's trying to maintain the zero voltage difference. So that means that here we'll have our virtual ground as well. So I can directly calculate the voltage on uh, R2 as um, well, this is the current, but the, uh, the voltage on R2 will, will be directly equal to the voltage that here we have on the output, since this is our virtual ground as well. Uh, the same will happen with uh, the voltage and current that I'm pushing from uh, the reference source. So uh, again, this is my, my virtual ground. This is some voltage VREF and the current that's flowing through this is uh, equal to VREF over R5. And uh, here for DAC it's V, the voltage on the output divided by R2. Now uh, this operation amplifier, will, well, we will consider it now as an ideal operation amplifier. And uh, an ideal operation amplifier has zero input current. So here, this will be zero input current flowing in the non-inverting input. And this means that uh, the current needs to flow all through this resistor R3. So it's going from R2, like that, plus from R5, like this. So one part of the current that we are pushing through our return wire is coming from this reference voltage and from this DAC. What's next? Well, next is uh, that we can actually calculate uh, the value of uh, this uh, current because uh, we certainly know what are our components' values, so what is R2 and what is R5, and we can say, okay, now. Ohm's law, so this current plus this current needs to be I1. And that's the equation that you can see here. So the voltage on the DA converter, well, this is proportional to what I measure. Uh, VREF is constant, so this is like a constant part. Now, let's take a look on this part of the circuit. Well, I told you that. Uh, I want that those two nodes, the non-inverting and inverting, have the same voltage, so zero voltage difference. Uh, in our circuit, we have a resistor that I have called R4 here, and uh, R6 as well. So this means that uh, if this really maintains the zero voltage dif difference, then it means that uh, the voltage drop on R3 needs to be the same like the voltage drop on R4. In other words, the ratio between the current and resistance here is the same like the ratio between current and resistance in this part of the circuit. And that's what you can see here written by those two equations. So the voltage that here we have 
marked as V plus will be given by R3 times I1 and I can calculate I1 and uh, the voltage on the here on this my let's say local ground that's connected to the inverting input is given by R4 times I2 but where is I2 coming from? Well, it will not come from the op amp because uh, ideal op amp this current will be zero so I2 needs to come from the current loop which will go like this uh, through resistor R5 through transistor Q1 and from the power supply so um, this circuit is uh, basically measuring what is the current that flows like this because uh, it is sensing the voltage on R4 and uh, it's controlling this with a feedback connection you can see that there is a feedback connection like that so the output of my operation amplifier is changing voltage that opens or closes transistor Q1 and Q1 will be open to such extent that uh, here this current produces the same voltage drop on R4 as we had on R3 coming from the DAC. So in other words what this is doing is that uh, this is transferring the voltage that I had as my useful signal to the current that I have on my current loop. Now typically the resistances R3 and R4 will have different values because uh, we want that uh, our majority of the current is coming from the current loop like that and uh, that only a very small portion of my current is coming actually from my DAC or from my reference sources so that we don't take the current from our circuit like this but we take the majority from the current loop uh, so this is the main functionality of, uh, of the circuit now uh, you would not use this circuit just like this uh, in an industrial application in an industrial application uh, you typically need uh, at least two more features uh, in your circuit and uh, one feature is uh, the polarity protection and the other one is over voltage protection so polarity protection might be achieved with a diode because a diode uh, will block the flow of current in uh, the opposite direction so for example if I take a look on this circuit we can see that okay this is positive and this is negative but uh, what if for some reason due to some fault or someone's, someone is not paying attention uh, will connect this in the inverse direction so in this case what's going on is that uh, here will, will be plus and here will be minus so current can flow like that no problem with the resistor like this it will flow also in the reverse direction in the transistor and then we have short connection uh, and I'm not speaking just about this regulator and this part this also assumes that uh, I have the correct polarity so uh, if I would not have the uh, polarity reversal protection then I would destroy my circuit and uh, you can see this part has uh, is this protection we use a bridge connection of four diodes so this is a bridge rectifier and uh, if the polarity is correct if this is plus then the current flows like this plus like that now it will go through uh, the, the diode that uh, is uh, forward biased which um, well I think that here they have like a a wrong oriented diode it should it should be this diode and it should go like this like that. Uh, then it will go through your circuit which sits here 
and uh, back like this and uh, again I think this diode should be oriented in a different direction in the picture and it should go like this and uh, if you reverse the polarity for some reason it will still be working because uh, the orientation of your power supply here will be correct as well and uh, the well this kind of circuit will work in both polarities and uh, the over voltage protection is this part this is a, a diode that uh, will work uh, well will open if uh, your voltage is higher than a certain limit and uh, in this case it will absorb the excess energy now the over voltage protection uh, will not only eliminate the problems of uh, let's say higher voltages but this will typically last only for a limited time but uh, it is also some kind of protection against interference because uh, here you may get uh, larger voltages uh, that will get induced there will be like short spikes over there and uh, the excess energy will be absorbed in this connection and this is like a filtering capacitor because here we want that uh, our voltage is steady so uh, in total uh, the circuit may look something like this this is what we have just uh, been talking about uh, this is uh, the polarity protection and uh, this is the over voltage protection ah, I see wh where was the where was the problem uh, in this explanation uh, I assume that this is uh, the input but uh, in fact uh, this is the output to my circuit and this is the input from the power supply so in this case it's correct the current is flowing like this like that and if it's this is positive then current flows like this and this is plus and here is minus and uh, it's uh, well it's going like this into the minus like that so that was my mistake I uh, did not notice that uh, under but typically on you have the input on the left hand side and output here but in this picture they have input from power supply on the right side and uh, here is the well, output uh, for your circuit so this is how it may look like uh, this then sits uh, in your sensor you can see it's like a fairly simple connection uh, the one component is here you have uh, another integrated circuit as a reference regulator another component and this might be the DAC of your microcontroller or it may be like a standalone DAC and uh, you can see here also the values to give you an idea about the, the ratios so the 25 ohms is the resistor that I have in the current loop and uh, this was denoted as R3 in my previous circuit so you can see it's like uh, 100 times larger so that the majority of the current really flows like this from the current loop and it's not being taken from uh, from the DC or from the reference so this is a, a fairly simple circuit uh, it may power your sensor directly also from uh, uh, the current loop so um, uh, if the power consumption of all this is uh, under 4 milliamperes you don't need an external power supply and uh, you are powering this uh, from the current loop directly uh, let's talk a little bit more about the properties of uh, current sources so uh, an ideal current source uh, gives you a current that is independent on the load so this is a standard symbol that uh, we'll be using uh, and this is its uh, volt ampere characteristic so on the y-axis here I have voltage and uh, on the uh, on the x-axis I have current so in the ideal case if we would have uh, an ideal current source I'm changing the load I'm changing the voltage that uh, is in there but uh, the current is independent on that now in the real world we will not have an ideal voltage supply so current supply and uh, here the current will drop somehow 
the point is that uh, in our system that we have just seen here, it's a feedback connection which measures the current. So we are adjusting the current that is being pushed through the current loop. But this will have some limit if uh, the voltage that we have here on the output should be larger than uh, the power supply voltage or the current drop on our wiring, we cannot maintain constant current. So we can say that uh, the ideal current source has an infinite in internal resistance. In reality, it's large, it's like a few mega ohms. Uh, why is it insensitive to interference? Now, this is a similar example that I showed you in the simulation. So let's say we have a 24 volts power supply. This is the standard power supply for industrial applications. Uh, 250 ohms is my sense resistor. Now, uh, the wire resistor is, uh, is uh, 10 ohms, for example. And uh, this is uh, the output resistance of uh, my uh, current source. So uh, let's say 3 mega ohms, for example. And I'm pushing through the current like this. And I want to know uh, what effect will the changes that I make have on the voltage that I measure here on this sense resistor, because this is what I care about. So in this calculation, I have assumed that uh, I have 20 milliamps in the current loop. I'm adding 20 volts as a noise signal that, that's here uh, in the current loop. And uh, I'm looking what uh, is my voltage on the sense resistor. So here we'll see that uh, in reality, it's it has not zero sensitivity to my, um, to my interference, but it is definitely much or much better than uh, the voltage signal. So normally 250 ohms times 20 milliamps will give me 5 volt signal. So without any interference my signal here will be 5 volts. Now I have added 20 volts on uh, my interference. You can see this circuit if you analyze this uh, circuit you'll find that it's again a voltage divider, nothing special, and it's given by this formula. So uh, 20 volts times uh, the resistances that I have in the circuit. And uh, here I see that uh, the voltage that I've added is 1.7 millivolts. So my signal, my useful signal is uh, 5 volts and my noise is 1.7 millivolts. So that's fairly good, it's like only 0.034% of the error that is caused by noise. And this will be definitely much smaller than, uh, for example, the error that I caused by a limited resolution of my, of my microprocessor uh, ADC, for example, here. So we can see that uh, although the current signal is sensitive to interference, but we'll, 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 we are few orders of magnitude better than uh, in the case of voltage signal. Uh, okay, uh, now what might be the problems uh, of uh, the current signal? Well, the problem might be the so-called ground loops. So you can see here that uh, well, this is like for many cases uh, that uh, we may have in an industrial application. Uh, here we have the power supply, we have the transducer and we are pushing through some current like this. And we can know that here we have some local ground of my power supply that might be grounded and here my instrument may be grounded as well. And if those two grounds are connected then uh, we may have a problem like this. Uh, there might be another current that is being pushed like this between the grounds because there might be some voltage offsets here. And in order to eliminate these ground loops, uh, what we typically do is that either we separate completely the power supply, so this power supply is floating, so it's not grounded like that. 
uh, or we can insulate uh, the instrument from the ground so that this has a local ground and uh, this is my ground of my power supply. So there are several techniques uh, how to do this. Um, there are described, for example, in this uh, this white paper. Uh, it might be quite useful to 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 know that this problem might exist because uh, that if you have a ground loop like this, uh, you will basically ruin your measurements because uh, you will have another current that's flowing through your loop, and uh, this will be added or subtracted from your useful signal. Uh, it is also quite common to use uh, a common power supply to power all your transducers. So then obviously, well, <coughs> it's clear how to use it. You have 24 volts power supply. Uh, you have the different transducers always connected to plus with the plus wire. And uh, this will be your sense resistor. Separate, you see separate for, uh, for every transducer and this is your instrument that is showing you what is the useful signal in there. Uh, one advantage of uh, the current loop is that um, in some extent you may also measure multiple times your variable. And I'm saying to some extent because uh, keep in mind that we are limited by the resistance that we have in the current loop. So I cannot add, I cannot keep adding instruments because I'm with every instrument I'm adding an additional sense resistor, which is here, which is here. Uh, you can see we can connect an instrument such as, uh, for example, a controller system. We can connect a local display which will show us on some panel independently on this instrument what is the actual uh, measured variable. But uh, we cannot uh, get uh, with the resistance too high. Uh, so if this would be 100 ohms, this would be 100 ohms as well. So 200 ohms. And this gives us about 400 ohms for our wire resistance. So that's the limiting factor. Okay, uh, here is an example of uh, such a device uh, that is powered uh, through the current loop. So that's basically the, the system that we have just seen in the schematic. Uh, here they have used a microprocessor. So this is a microprocessor. And this part in, in orange, this is uh, the uh, digital to analog converter, which is uh, controlling the current loop. So the current is flowing like this. And uh, this is the voltage regulator and uh, this is uh, the ADC that actually samples the measured value. So this can be <coughs> an RTD, for example, PT100. Uh, you measure the signal from the bridge connection here with the ADC. Uh, sometimes you can measure it directly uh, with the microprocessor, it depends on the resolution that you want. And uh, here you output this as an analog signal. And then it may look like this. Uh, you can see the microprocessor. Uh, this would be the terminal for the current loop. Uh, this is the bridge rectifier uh, or the protection against ESD. And this would be the transistor. So this would be this, this uh, component over there. So it's quite small, fits directly into the sensor. Uh, the power consumption is not that big. You can see that this is powered by 3.3 volts. You can say, okay, 142 microamps. Per, per megahertz so this does not have to be fast and it will take maybe under one milliamp maybe what two milliamps and uh, hence you can power it directly from the current loop okay uh, so uh, what happens if uh, you are converting uh, at the control system your current signal back to voltage so this is your current loop, this is your sense resistor, let's say 100 ohms. And uh, the control system in most cases will have an analog to digital converter. Uh, and uh, what will be the error? So if you use a 12-bit converter, you can calculate this uh, with the sense resistor and with the, with the current. Then for 12 bits resolution it will give you this error. And for 16 bits resolution, it will give you this error. So uh, 16 bits, that's nothing uncommon in today's AD converters. 
so okay we have a, a fairly small error but to this error caused by conversion you need to add also the errors caused by eventual interference uh, errors caused by the tolerance of this resistor for example so this is only one source of errors that uh, you will have in such a system okay uh, now what will be the next step uh, is it somehow possible to use this current loop as a digital bus well it is and there is uh, one protocol that is called hard that is doing exactly this and uh, the hard protocol is using the current loop to communicate in the digital way over the current loop so you still have the current loop from 4 to 20 milliamps which gives you an analog value of your variable but over this current loop you may get uh, in touch with multiple devices so this is like a kind of transition between the analog signals and between the digital signals such as uh, profit bus, ethernet and so on there are actually several standards some can use up to 15 devices some can use up to 63 or 64 devices so it means that uh, you have a single current loop and on this single current loop you can get the data from all the sensors you can get um, some info about the sensors such as manufacture such as calibration and so on and uh, now this is working on the standard current loop but it, the operation principle is fairly simple it uses frequency modulation so this is an example of uh, your analog signal uh, that would be my current uh, that I have uh, as an analog variable and over this signal we have a superimposed sine wave which uh, for zero has 200, uh, 2400 hertz frequency and uh, for one it has uh, 1200 frequent kill hertz frequency so it looks like this it's like superimposed like that now why is this working is that uh, at the end you make uh, you make an average anyway so you sample the time sample the values in time and if this is superimposed like this then uh, here you add some current but here you, you remove the same current so if you make an average in this will give you the same value like without the superimposed signal so uh, we measure still the analog current and digital communication is used for example to find some faults on the device uh, find the device name manufacturer and so on uh, so this is how it looks like uh, you have the field device which is your sensor uh, this is your current loop like this and uh, you may use multiple multiple uh, masters on the on the bus so for example a PC uh, for example a, a held, handheld device so you can still use your analog infrastructure and uh, you can uh, read the data in the digital way as well now for some reason the, the text is now or the picture is above my my uh, my text so it should be like this so uh, if you have one device you can communicate with that in the analog way and digital as well so in this case you can read the current signal which corresponds to your variable and you can read more data about the sensor itself uh, but it's also possible to use uh, multi-point communication so here you see we have different uh, devices, different sensors. Uh, in this case, we need to use the digital communication. So uh, the current is fixed to 4 milliamps so that we can power all our devices. And uh, now uh, we can read the numbers, we can read the info from, uh, from the, the devices. Now this is slow, it's not very frequently used, uh, because if I'm using already a system like this, why not to use a digital communication directly? So uh, the hard protocol is like a kind of transition between the analog communication and uh, 
digital communication um, you will be talking about digital communications um, on, on a separate subject uh, but remember that this exists uh, we have it in the lab we use it from time to time and um, well the advantage of this is that you can still use your analog infrastructure and uh, you can use an ampere meter for example to get your current but you can get uh, also additional info such you can you may change for example the range of your instrument you may change for example the units of your instrument and so on so that's all about uh, analog sensors and uh, about analog signals